Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Make sure you smash that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And here's a video idea that has been requested to me a lot. People are saying, what would have the election looked like if COVID never took place, if the virus never happened? And it's a very interesting question because we know that many states changed their election laws in terms of mail-in voting without the consent of the state legislatures in many cases. And what that has really allowed to happen is for a lot of low propensity voters to turn out. Many of them were just bombarded with messages from the left. We saw Time Magazine's article saying that it allowed for a, a fortification of, of billionaires and the elite to essentially come together and ally with far left groups to do everything they possibly could have done. And I mean everything they possibly could have done to get Donald Trump out of office. And with a strong economy without COVID, I really can't see that happening, at least not to the extent that it did. Before COVID, Donald Trump had an extremely strong economy. You had an unemployment rate that was nearing an all-time low. Uh, and he kept it that way for four years. The whole, I built the economy, not you, that doesn't last for four years. When Trump is in office for four years and the economy is still booming. You see manufacturing jobs increasing. Uh, what you see is the fact that Trump has the mandate over the economy, and a lot of people, a majority of American people, would agree with that, and the economy is usually the number one clear indicator. Also, I, I don't know what the implications for the riots would have been uh, if COVID was not a thing. I don't even know if it would have happened. Maybe it wouldn't have even shown up in the news. Obviously, uh, maybe you would not have seen the police officers been in the same position had it not been for COVID. Maybe it would not have happened if we're talking about from an alternative history position. Obviously, we knew that uh, George Floyd, I believe, in the autopsy had COVID. I don't know how that affected where he was that day that put him in that position. But um, either way, it's something interesting to look at. I don't know if the riots really helped or hurt Donald Trump. I think a lot of people either thought his response was too strong if you were on the left or too weak if you were on the right. And I think that altogether it probably dipped his approval rating a little bit. It dipped him in the polls, but that also could have been due to voters becoming shy or just saying that they support BLM to pollsters out of fear of potentially being seen as a racist. So a lot of things played a role here in this election. But before COVID, Donald Trump in every swing state was, you know, even in Wisconsin, he was up in pretty much every poll that we saw. A couple polls had him up. Uh, Florida, I believe a lot of polls had him even, but polls in Florida were off by like four to five points anyways. So I think Trump would have easily won. We're going to start here. I'm going to fill out the safe red states, or at least fill out the states that were safe red in the 2020 election, because they would have been safe red states, with the exception of, you know, the second district in Nebraska, it would have been a safe red state. All of these states would have been safe red. And I do believe that the suburbs that, uh, especially the suburban wine moms, that just answer to media hysteria would not have been able to uh, come out in the high numbers that they essentially did if it wasn't for the BLM rise up or if it wasn't for covid uh, so I do believe that uh, these states that were safe red would have stayed safe red. Also, Ohio and Iowa would have been safe red. I do honestly believe that the state of Texas, it would have been close to it. It potentially, with the Hispanic trend, could have been safe red. Although there is an argument to be made that, you know, since a lot of Hispanics in Texas own small businesses, maybe they were more likely to vote for Trump because of COVID because they opposed the lockdowns and things like that. That has to be taken into consideration as well. Uh, either way, I would put Texas as as probably safe, but not like like, but not a ridiculously you know high margin. Maybe by like ten to eleven points. Uh, Maine second district probably would have been safe in this reality as well. So now it's time to fill out the safe Democrat states. Hawaii would have been safe. California, uh, Washington, Oregon. I, I'm gonna lean towards probably putting it safe because of the way that it swung. It could have been likely though. Um, D.C., Maryland, um, Delaware, Biden obviously would have made it safe. If it was Bernie Sanders, it could have been closer. Um, a lot of, I mean, we saw some early polls that had Donald Trump and Bernie essentially tied in Delaware. I don't think Trump would have won, but I think it would have been a little bit competitive if the virus never took place. Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Vermont, and New York, and Illinois 
all these states would have been safe blue. I think Virginia, Virginia almost was likely. I think Virginia and Colorado would have both been likely. Uh, Colorado always has had, you know, universal mail-in voting. Nevada added it, and I think that really changed things. Nevada could have been lean red, I think, lean to tilt to lean red if it wasn't for COVID. And by the way, in terms of the popular vote, I think Trump would have won the popular vote. I think he would have won it by like, you know, 70 million to 68 million or something like that. He probably wouldn't have been able to get 75 million votes if it wasn't for COVID, but Biden wouldn't have been able to get as many as he did either because it would have been a slightly lower turnout election. Uh, either way, I think Trump would have crossed the 70 million vote threshold, especially in retrospect, which is interesting because now we get to look at it from a full perspective, uh, seeing what the results were in 2020 and seeing where potentially Trump was held back by. Wisconsin, honestly, I think could have been up to a likely Republican state given the, the massive swing we saw up in, up in the wow counties. I don't think you would have seen that if COVID never took place. I think Wisconsin could have easily been a state that would be lean to likely Republican. I think Michigan would have been tilt Republican. I think Pennsylvania would have been lean. I think that Wisconsin could easily have been likely Republican, if not lean to likely, somewhere in that range. Florida, I think, would have been likely Republican for sure. Um, especially with the high popularity of Ron DeSantis. DeSantis' popularity took a little bit of a hit, but it wasn't that big. And obviously, governor popularity does not translate to presidential popularity, as we saw up in New Hampshire with Chris Sununu. But DeSantis is a, you know, an unabashed pro-Trump governor. He would have been there on the campaign trail. And Trump, you know, and his ability to hold big rallies on its own all year, that would have been a massive help to him because Biden, either way, COVID or not, can't even fill up a can't even fill up a coffee shop in many instances or a parking lot. So already Trump's at 269. North Carolina, he won that. In reality, I think you could be pushing that towards likely uh, without the virus for sure. Um, New Mexico, New Mexico, I would have said probably still would have gone blue, but I think it would have been a very close state. I think I think even Ron Chetty would have had a real shot to win in the state of New Mexico, New Mexico tilt to lean. Arizona, Arizona would have been lean red for sure, um, especially without the mass mail-ins, the you know, low propensity voter turnout that we, what we saw increase significantly in Arizona um, because, like I said, the laws were changing, especially by you know, the elites and the big tech and the big business colluding with the far left groups that were able to do this. Um, Nebraska's second that is a state that I think would have stayed with Trump, honestly. In this reality, I think it would have been tilt Republican. I think it would have stayed with Donald Trump. So Trump wouldn't lose a single state that he lost in 2016. Georgia would have stayed lean Republican. The trend in Georgia would have been obviously continuing, but it would not nearly have been as bad as we saw it this time, especially with the changes made to the voting system. Uh, in the state of New Hampshire, Again, this is a state that potentially maybe Trump would have been able to win, I think. Um, either way, it would, be, it would have been very close. I'm going to put New Hampshire in the tilt red column. Same thing with Minnesota. Um, Maine at large and Maine's uh, first district here. Maine's first district would have been blue still. Maine at large, I think. I think Maine at large, given the fact that Biden only won it by seven, I think there's a real chance that it could have gone Republican. I think that it actually... Um, it didn't trend to the left, and I mean trend, not swing, it didn't trend to the left as much as, as New Hampshire did. It was actually still a state that was uh, fairly closer than I think many people in the election prediction mafia had expected. But here is my map. Without the virus, Donald Trump would have won this election 328 to 210 over Joe Biden. It would have been an easy blowout. It would have been an easy victory for the president. And if COVID is gone, I think that Donald Trump potentially could come back in 2024 and win against Biden by a similar margin. But it depends on several factors. What is the popularity of the Biden administration? What's going to happen to the voting laws in many states that were significantly altered in places like Pennsylvania and places like Wisconsin, where they were accepting I think they were accepting ballots in some places in Pennsylvania like seven days after. What about the counting system? Are they going to count the votes quickly? And are they going to count them transparently like Florida does? Or are they going to do what Pennsylvania did? Or are they going to do what Georgia did? Because that matters. And we the people, whatever you know, side we're on even, should demand a transparent, quick count of the election. Because that's one of the only ways that people will feel secure in their voting system moving forward. But I will say this. Donald Trump, 328 to 210. And Donald Trump wasn't that far off, even with everything. And I mean 
everything that happened. Donald Trump was only 43,000 votes away or so from a second term. Uh, it would have been 269 all if he would have uh, got those votes in Wisconsin, Arizona, and Georgia, and then he would have won in the House. At that point, it would have been a very intense battle, and it would have been a very fitting ending to a crazy year to have a tight election. But uh, since Republicans hold the state legislature delegations, yeah, absolutely. And people are going to say, what about the House and the Senate? Well, I think the Republicans would have taken back the House easily because obviously impeachment would have still been on a lot of people's minds because you wouldn't have had the virus. And also, you may have seen a more divided left, depending on how, you know, in the states that were more affected by the virus, would Bernie Sanders have stayed in a little bit longer and uh, peeled off a little bit more voters that would have been, you know, opposed to the vote blue, no matter who type of thing, possibly, I don't know, I don't think it would have been as big of a deal as it was in 2016. But looking at the full scope, Biden should be thanking this virus every day um, for helping him essentially win the White House, because like I said, everything was essentially changed. The society was changed. The voting system was changed to specifically benefit him, because that's who actually big business wanted in the White House, believe it or not. And it's crazy to see that the party of big business is, is now on the side of the Democrats, but that's just the way it is. Uh, Biden beat Trump in Wall Street donations. He beat him in big money. And that's largely what helped him win in many cases. So here we go. If you guys disagree with the state, you can comment down below. But either way, 328 to 210, here's the final map. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below. Comment down below and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media, including Alt Tech. The links are all in the description below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.